Eric, we had uh, a, a quite a bit of chance to chat last night. And let me tell you, here's a kid who has already convinced me that Bitcoin is not only here to stay, but it's going to change our world. <laughs> um, but as we were having this conversation, as we were talking about all these things, it really made me wonder, what were you like as a little kid? <laughs> um, as a kid, I was inquisitive, to say the least, um, always asking questions. I actually remember in first grade uh, asking my teacher, you know, why is the sky blue? And she told me, you're too young. You don't need to know that. <laughs> Um, so that kind of sucked. Uh, <laughs> but the interesting thing is that school, asking questions, if it wasn't in the curriculum, I didn't get my questions answered. So I was pretty disengaged in school, to be honest. So if you were so disengaged in school, how did you end up learning? Yeah. Um, there was this really awesome experience I had in middle school where I found uh, Cosmos, uh, by Carl Sagan in my library. And I got to learn, you know, why the sky was blue and why grass was green. But beyond that, I learned that I had the tools already to understand the worlds around me. You know, curiosity and questions. And actually, I'll tell you a story. Um, one of my best experiences was thinking about one day, you know, how long would it take me to get to school? And, you know, I didn't know much about that. I had like pre-algebra knowledge at the time, but I was excited. So I did what any scientist would do, and I ran home and did an experiment. Um, I got my ruler, my notebook, and I did a few steps to test like, you know, how long would each step take. And ultimately, I derived an equation equivalent to distance equals rate times time. Now, um, <laughs> ironically, the next day in school, I went back to memorizing formulas. And what I realized is that I was learning more at recess than I was in the classroom. So. Now, you talked about some of the tools that you realized that you had at your fingertips to help with your education and your learning. I mean, the internet, that's been one of the biggest tools you've used. Yeah, um, yeah it, was, it was amazing. In, in high school, my family and I got the internet for the first time. And in 11th grade, I took my interest in science, and I started to think more about building things and creating things. So I became more interested in engineering. And um, unfortunately, my school didn't have any engineering programs, but I did what any scientist would do, and I Googled it. <laughs> I looked up, you know, where could I find you know, an engineering program? And it turned out there was one in Center City in Philadelphia. And so I looked up, I went on the High School of Engineering and Science Club website, and I emailed Mr. Kaler, who ran the robotics club there. And he emailed me back and welcomed me to stop by for the next meeting. And so I showed up. It was like an hour drive. I ended up taking like three buses and a train to get there. But I showed up, and Mr. Kaler welcomed me in, and he gave me this robotics kit, this Lego Mindstorms kit, and sat me with my friend Alex. And he said, all right, you're going to build a robot that can solve a maze. I was like, all right. <laughs> So me and Alex put this robot together, this kid just following instructions. And by the end of the night, I was hooked. It didn't do anything, but I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> and <laughs> I, was, I was walking out, and Mr. Kaler knew that I couldn't come to the school very often. It was very far away. But he said, you know, Eric, you came all this way. I want to give you this kit. We have all your information, so don't lose it. Uh, <laughs> so I ended up taking the kit home. And I walk into my, to my house, and my grandma sees me, and she's like, Eric, what's that? And I was like, it's a robot. And she's like, a robot? And I was like, no, grandma, a robot. And we both started laughing. <laughs> so I went down that night to the basement, and I went on the internet again. I didn't know how to program. I didn't know anything. So I spent the first hour putting back the robot based on the instructions that I learned before. And again, went on Google, how to program. And uh, I went to this website and just went through all the videos and learned. And within three hours, I had a robot that could run into the wall. It was amazing. <laughs> 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 um, but the interesting thing is I kept going back and, and changing the program. And turns out the hardest thing to get a robot to do is go straight. And so uh, I, got, I, hit this, I, I ran into a bug. And so I posted, I ended up posting on this on this Robot C forum. It's basically the, uh, like the language I was using. And this is at 3 in the morning now. And <laughs> Xander, a 37-year-old from the, from the Netherlands, 
responded within five minutes. And we ended up working through the night on the bug, and by the morning, I had a robot that could navigate my, my little uh, basement. <laughs> it was awesome. So what that, what that shows you is that you know, learning wasn't happening you know, between the hours of 8 and 3 or inside of a classroom. It was happening everywhere. And the, the amazing thing is that I was no longer bound by space and time. You know, I felt like a superhero. <laughs> so from the East Coast, where you were doing all of these things, uh, and your experience with robotics and the internet, to Stanford, mm -hmm. when you came here, what was that like? It was amazing. Uh, you know, it, was a, it was a big shock. Um, but I was excited to take you know, what I had learned in high school and continue. I loved creating things. And the, I remember the first questions I remember asking when I got to campus was, where is the robotics club? And you know, everyone's like, you know, it has to be somewhere over here, you know, over there. Um, <laughs> turns out there wasn't one. And so the second question I asked is, how do I create one? Uh, <laughs> turns out that's not easy either. But <laughs> I went on Facebook, and I looked up uh, we have like a Facebook group, and so I posted, hey, anyone interested in robotics? And I had like 20 people respond. And so we ended up creating this, uh, uh, this Facebook group, and we decided to meet during NSO. So we all got together at Ike's and started talking about, you know, what did we want this to be? And so we ended up, for the next like month, creating the robotics club. And within that time, we started using all of our money from our you know, internships before and all that, and started building robots. And three months later, we were learning, we had to learn you know, how to run a club, you know? And so through creating the club, we ended up learning how to do financing, how to recruit, how to run events. And by the time we ended up becoming an official club, we had won one competition, um, raised $60,000, and had five student projects. So, that, that, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, one of my biggest takeaways from that experience was when you're excited about creating something, you'll learn anything you need to do to, to realize it, you know? And so that was just an amazing experience, yeah. You know, along all the paths of your life, through all the stages, you've mm -hmm. really taken learning traditional learning and kind of turn it on its head, right? Like, sure. you, you've really learned from very, uh, various factors and brought it together. Mm -hmm. As you think out to the future, as we think about education in the 21st century mm -hmm. with the combination of technology, based on your experience, what are some of the values or advice or, or learnings that we should be thinking about as we propel into this new century of learning? Yeah. Um, so as a 21st century learner, one of the first questions I think about is, you know, what if instead of asking student questions, we inspired them and encouraged them to ask their own? You know, so learning based on curiosity rather than a curriculum. And, you know, thinking about my experience of, you know, you know <laughs> posting 3 o'clock in the morning about, you know, how to fix this bug, um, you know, learning took place anywhere. And I, I really... I really think about that is, you know, how can we break down the barriers between not only time, but, but age, right? Xander was, was on the other side of the planet, and he was 37, but he was just as much a peer to me at that moment than any. And he respected me just as much for being this, like, you know, 16-year-old kid who wanted to build a robot. Um, you know, another thing I think about is, you know, what if we made learning more like a kitchen than a cafeteria. And I'm serious by that. You know, what if we made it more creative where you're engaged in the process, and within it, you're learning all these really interesting, like, math, and really, like, when I built the robot, it was turning these math symbols that I learned in school and memorized to something that moved the robot. And that, that really, you know, inspired me. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Smalls. <laughs>